Hello everyone, Rami Lee here, and welcome back to Game Builder Garage. Uh, I believe at this point Matt should be just about arriving. Uh, I hope you're all doing well today. Uh, by now, we should have seen everything that's out for the Nintendo Direct, and I hope it's awesome news. I still don't know yet. But, in the first episode, well, we didn't really do much. It was mostly focused around how to make the B button jump. But, this seems to be a pretty interesting demo so far. Uh, if everyone likes it enough, uh, I might buy the full version. Uh, just because it seems interesting to me. But if people like it as a series, I'd like it even more. But without further ado, I hope you got your snacks. Because we're jumping right into it. Now, I'm going to test your knowledge of the basics with a puzzle challenge. Sounds good to me. Make the person jump. Raijin, welcome to the puzzles. Here's where I'll be putting you through your paces with some puzzles to make sure you've grasped the basics of Game Builder Garage. To clear the puzzle, you need to make the person collect the apple. How are you going to get it, I wonder? <laughs> well, oh. As things are, there's nothing you can do to make the person move. You'll need to make a change if you want to get that apple. In fact, you'll need to do some programming all by yourself. Huh. <laughs> Shouldn't be a problem for a pro gamer like me. Keep in mind, you can't just edit whatever you feel like in the puzzles. <laughs> Nani? The only way you're permitted to solve this particular problem is by connecting the button node on and the person node on. So, how do you think you can help the person get the apple? When you think you've made the necessary change, head over to the game screen to test it out. If it doesn't work, just head back to the program screen and try again. Okay? Give it your best shot. Huh. A simple solution. Just make him jump. So difficult. I mean, that's barely worthy of any kind of celebration, but whatever. Awesome. Looks like you definitely have the basics of the Game Builder Garage down. From now on, I'll be testing how well you know Game Builder Garage and the note on. So between each lesson, I'll test you with some checkpoints. I'll also be adding things to my guide every now and then. So if there's anything that's not clear, feel free to hit up Alice's guide. Now there's nothing holding you back, so let's get to lesson one. We did it! And now it's time for Tag Showdown! Looks like things are about to start getting more complex. Step one. Adding player That music. It kind of reminds me of something, but I can't put my hand on it. Or my finger on it. Adding player controls. Hey Raijin! I'm so glad you made it! Welcome to the interactive lessons. Just in case you forgot, I'm Bob. Huh. Isn't it weird how I never see Bob and Alice at, in the same place at the same time? And I can't wait to start working with you. Well, it's a day to remember, because you're going to make your very first game. Tag Showdown. But you clearly already have it made here. Simple enough. In this game, a tagger will chase after a runner while dodging a torrent of rolling balls. Sounds fun already, right? And the thrilling game will be played out right here on the game screen. I just noticed the game, the, the place where we're building games is the, uh... It, it's the... I don't want to call it an area, but it's from the... The fourth Attack on Titan opening. <laughs> oh, 
Of course, you can't play anything just yet. You think I'm joking, don't you? Go look it up. Attack on Titan opening 4. Uh, I keep forgetting what it's called, though. But it's like a very... A very hopeful song, but it shows them in this kind of uh, landscape. I mean, you haven't even programmed the game yet. From now on, the programming that you do on the right uh, on the program screen will be reflected right here on the game screen. Without further ado, let's head over to the program screen and start programming our game. Surely this task will be nothing for uh, an elite gamer such as myself. Welcome to the program screen. Yeah, we already know all this. We'll need to call a person note on. I see. Oh, wow. But why a person when we could have a UFO? Hello, peeps. I'm the person note on. Nice to see you, Raijin. Now the programming starts. <laughs> yeah, great stuff. Time for me to step in the uh, into the limelight, peeps. Hey, let me ask you a question. Peeps, the candy, what what's your take? Them little marshmallow uh, chicks. I haven't had any in about 28 years, I think. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't I don't really care for them. They're kind of like too sweet. Okay, so what happened after we placed the person note on? Let's take a look at the game screen and find out. A character appeared? And here's our person on our blank empty game screen. Putting the person note on on the program screen makes the person appear on the game screen. Clear enough, right? Next up, we want to be able to control our player using the controller. Try moving the person with L now. Nope, it, it doesn't. No. It doesn't do anything. This is where the programming comes in. Let's get our player character mobile. <laughs> no problem. We'll need to call in the stick note on. I assume it would be an input. Huh. <laughs> Boing! What are you, a Mr. Saturn? You're Raijin, right? I bet you can't wait to move that control stick around. We need to link up the stick note on. Really? It wouldn't let me do it? I had to press that thing first. Hey, sticky! Time to do what you do best. Set it over the output from the control stick. Boing! Okay, let's see what's happening over on the game screen. Yes, now we can move left and right. Hooray. Amazing. Our player character is moving with L. Bravo. Now with that covered, we can move on to something else. Wouldn't it be good if the person could jump when a button is pressed? Why, yes. And I wouldn't make the same button be used to control a power-up... I'm just, I'm throwing all kinds of shade everywhere. Uh, first, move the stick. Oh, if, if you can get what I'm referencing, you get some bonus points. Ah, Matthew has arrived, everyone. Hang tight. Hey, Matt. One eternity later. Uh, all right, everyone, we're back. I'm joined by Matthew. Uh, oh. I, I hope you can all hear him. I know, I need, I can't wait to get like a real ass mic. What was I doing? Uh, move, move the stick note on over to the blue frame. Don't tell me what to do. There, you happy? Wait, huh? Button press. Oh, right, yeah, we need uh, to be able to jump. Yeah, I'm not stupid, Matthew. I've already been through this. I swear to God, Matthew. It's the button note on. Call me Button. You already know who I am, Button Note on. We met in the last stage. Oh, my my best 
buddy button. Oh, button mashing is two words. You said. Oh, ah, if it ain't my pal Raijin. If buttons are getting bashed, I got it covered. I'm not reading that. Yes, yes, I know. But, but what if we spice the things up a bit and instead of making B button jump, we make it do the action? Because I, I just love when games do that. If the button gets bashed, you can be sure I'll let you know. Thank you. Hey, thanks, bud. Alright, now we can move around and jump. I was actually just telling anyone who might watch this that we're in the landscape of the fourth Attack on Titan opening. The player jumped and you press B. We've been done testing it out. Yeah, 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 I know. Okay, guess what? You've cleared step one. I did it, Matthew. I'm a, I'm a programmer now. <laughs> Good job, peeps. In this step, we've made it possible to move the person with the controller. In the next step, we'll get ready to build the level for our game of tag. I don't mind saying, but I'm pretty excited about that. Me too. See you in the next step. All according to plan. Well, yeah, Matt, making games isn't an easy process. <laughs> Moving controllers with the control stick. I mean, it sounds rudimentary when you think about it. Welcome again, Raijin. Let's get right back to building our game of tag. But first, let's have a look. Oh, look, it saved my... what I've already done. Yeah, yeah. Wow, it even has uh, like a smaller jump for just lightly pressing the button. You've got it. Thanks to your top-notch work in the last lesson, you can now move the player of the controller. Hooray. Ho, oh, you're approaching me willingly. This time around, we'll be building the floor and walls. Excellent. But first, we need to decide where we're going to put the entire level. Oh. How about in this space up here? That should do. Uh, sure. Sounds like a plan. But if we're going to do that, we'll need the help of the game screen note on. You don't gotta lead me by the hand. <laughs> Hello, darlings. <laughs> Metaton? I'm gonna say you're looking radiant today. Oh, no, you know, man, I, I needed to hear that for someone. Oh, fuck you, <laughs> no. Yeah. Everyone's always mean to me. You must be Raijin. Everyone's saying you're the next big thing. Aha! I do it! <laughs> oh, me? Oh, 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 God. That, that's showing me memes I wish I could forget. No, that's an actual tattoo somewhere else. I know, but still. With you at the helm, this is going to be a simply stunning production. We're sure to rise to the very top, darling. If we make use of the game screen note on, we can determine which part of the program screen will be reflected on the game screen. <laughs> I couldn't have put it better myself, darling. Whatever I frame will appear vividly and thrillingly on the game screen. Let's make this game screen note on a little bit bigger. Can do now you see they should have made it like an icon to press. It's always the corner of the screen, like any application. But I guess it's whatever. Drag this icon to the if it's the blue frame perfectly. Now let's take a look and see what's happening over on the game screen. I think you notice that our player character is nowhere to be seen. You see, over on the program screen, the person on it isn't surrounded by the game screen note on. Well, obviously that would have happened. I mean, look, look what you made me do. Oh. As a matter of fact, I can. 
Wonderful. Now the person is in the limelight. The camera loves you, darling. It be sure to get my good side. Is this gonna fall? Yeah, see? Yikes, but not for long. You gotta put a floor, duh. Now we know what now we know that whatever is surrounded by the game screen note on the program screen. We reflect it on the game screen like you just saw. We're not in great shape if our player character can't stay on the screen. We will, of course, need an object note on to make the floor. Box. <laughs> hey yo, Alpha J here. <laughs> the irony, I already made that joke in the last episode. The name's Object Note On. Object Note On. True to their name, Object Note On or Note On. That make you know, having to say Note On over and over again makes me think of Udon, and it's making me hungry. <laughs> I. Me too, Matthew. Me too. No, I don't. Well, well. Anyways, he's not wrong. But he's right. Drag the object node on underneath the person node on. Can do. Oh. Oh yeah, Joey. Oh, whoa! Did you see that? Oh, sorry. I should mention. With nothing to keep them up, objects just drop right off the screen. Well, the floor shouldn't fall. They're just leading us to embarrass ourselves. We need to adjust the property setting to fix it so the object doesn't fall anymore. Oh. The disable the options movable, destructible, and destructive. That's true, a floor should just be visible and solid. If that's done, we can close the setting screen. Alright, let's see how we do it. Yay! We did it! Perfect, the object is staying where it should. I'm such a good game programmer. This person isn't falling off the screen either. Yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, the game attack wouldn't be very exciting on such a tiny platform. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Demolto. Yeah, look at us go. The player won't fall off quite easily now. The floor is doing its floor thing, but its color is kind of plain, right? Let's see if we could change the color too. Oh. I wonder what color we should choose. Here's where you'll be able to select a color for your object. It's a dirt floor? Yeah, I guess that works. Awesome! Well, the floor is taken care of, but if the player goes past the edge, We'll just fall off again. Perhaps some walls would make this level a little safer. <laughs> you, you dare imprison me. <laughs> Call it up more. Oh, check no on changing the settings again sounds like hard work, right? So let's save ourselves some work and just copy the floor to make the walls. Wow. Huh? Also, you got Wolfgar waiting for you. <laughs> He's like, hey, Matt. A floor, a wall is just a vertical floor. He's out of line. <laughs> but he's right. Drag the new object over here. I see. Now to make a copy of the new Nudon. You call it saving time, I call it cutting corners. 
At last, the walls are complete. And now I'm trapped in a prison of my own design. I did it to myself. Was wanting to move and jump. Yes. Indeed, Matthew. No need to worry about our player falling into the abyss now. Let's head back to the program screen. And now we're going to fill it with acid. I knew it! You just wanted to destroy me! Okay, let's see. Hmm, yes. I hereby declare step two complete. We did it! And just in time. In this step, we added a floor and some walls. The next step, we'll add some platforms to complete the level. Bye for now. See you again in step three. What are you doing, step three? <laughs> oh my god. Well, everyone, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> nice way to cap off the episode, sure Matthew. Holy. See, see you around, everybody. Once again, it's been Robbie Lee. Ha ha have a good night.